Hi guys, Core Logic Part 4. I've got a new friend I found on YouTube, Joe, to thank for this one for not only doing this experiment in advance, but also discovering these new modern manufactured cores. The material is called 3R1 Ferrite and they're produced by a company called Ferox Cube and I purchased them through Element 14. Here's the setup Joe sent me for plotting the magnetization curve of the square loop ferrite because we want to check that it actually is. I've done 50 turns for the primary, 75 turns for the secondary, and I've got a spare coil of 12 turns. You can see using wrap wire I've filled my core up so that I can't make any more turns on it, so my setup doesn't exactly duplicate Joe's, but it's enough to work. Mine is also a big mess of wires, so uh, I've got myself to blame for a noisy signal. One of my initial waveforms shows the toroid flipping back like a spring when it makes the switch. I actually like that better than the BH curve. I have fewer turns on my secondary so I get a very small plot. Uh, anything that's bigger wouldn't be proportionate. You can still see that ringing in this loop right at the corners. Little tiny loops. The first adjustment I'm making here is to the resistor in the circuit which is actually a pot and forms an integrator. Don't ask me, that's just what Joe told me. The second adjustment is to the variac that's powering the whole circuit and you'll see that when the ferrite is past its saturation point at each end, it can't do much else. That's also when the transformer starts to hum because the core's primary starts looking like a short circuit for more time than it's driving permeable ferrite. So that sets the scene for some more core logic experimentation. Of course, having larger cores, which is all that's available, introduces more problems. Slower transition times, more energy to drive them. This is Joe's core with a 250 turn secondary and his graph, which is better than mine. Catch us next time.